هو الذي بعث في الاميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم اياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم على الحكمه جاء سبع ست مقصد تعليم ومن كل جهاده سي نكالنا تو یہ ہمارے آپ کو غور کرنے کی بات ہے کہ اس میں نبوت کے طریقے سے ہٹ کر تعلیم دینا یا نبوت کے طریقے سے ہٹ کر علم حاصل کر لینا یہ کیسے ممکن ہوگا جب استنجے وضو پیشاب و خانے بیا شادی و بشری حاجتوں میں آپ کی سنت سے ہٹ کر کوئی راستہ کوئی اقتائد کا راستہ ہی نہیں ہے جس طرح مسلمان اپنی بشری حاجتوں میں سنتوں کے ساتھ مربوط ہے اس طرح مسلمان علم کے حاصل کرنے اور امت کے علم کو پہنچانے میں بھی اس طریقے کے ساتھ اس طریقے کا پابند ہے جو طریقہ علم کے پہنچانے کا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا ہے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمده و نصلی علی رسول الكریم My respected elders and dear brothers حضرت صاحب The two great responsibilities which are the foundation of our deen and Muslims today they are very neglectful of these two responsibilities or we can say these two foundations which are the basis of our deen, our religion and these two are the first is Iman and secondly is real knowledge. As I say, that a person feels that he is a born Muslim or he has just embraced Islam so he doesn't need to make prophet of Iman no, this is completely a wrong notion because Sahaba Rabi Allah used to say تَعَلَّمْنَ iman we learned Iman so although a person might be born in a Muslim home or he just entered into the fold of Islam there is a constant need of all the time learning Iman Iman has to be learned and then a person will achieve uh, the complete and the reality of Iman. In the same way, a person feels that I can acquire ilm. No, you don't have to acquire. It's a general process of acquiring knowledge. It is just not information regarding deen. It is the reality of ilm, which is a process on its own, which is its own set of rules that has to be acquired. As I say, that ilm is so important that <coughs> For any action in our Sharia, in our deen, that action to be correct, that action to be becomes a means of acceptance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that action, that amal has to be tabi'ah, that has to be in conformity with the ilm which was brought by Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ilm is imam, ilm has to be in front for that action to be accepted and that the action to be called an action and that has to be according to the deen which Nabi Adi Islam had brought. As I say, in the field of dunya, in the field of dunya, if anything, the person hasn't got a full knowledge of it, then he will, he will destroy, he will, he can't do full, he can't fulfill the right of that field. For example, he's a doctor, the person is a doctor. Now for him to practice medicine, he must have the full knowledge of medicine. He can't be half doctor, <laughs> patients are going to die. In the same way, he's an architect, he's an engineer, he must have the full knowledge of that profession so that he can fulfill the right of that profession. Imagine that deen, which is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that deen, that religion, that deen, which is, which is guaranteeing the success of the hum entire humanity in this world and in the world hereafter, you, you can have um, uh, half knowledge of it and you half baked. How can you do that? You must have full, full knowledge that only you can, you can, you can, you can benefit from the deen and from the religion. You can't have half knowledge. It is not possible. Any profession is not possible. Half knowledge. You can't practice that profession. So how is it about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, what is the process of acquiring knowledge? The process and the first and fundamental, the foundation of acquiring knowledge <coughs> is the sohbat. That you have to be in the environment. Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were with Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam physically. They just, they, 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 just, they just didn't heard the words of Nabi alayhi salam from far. They know we heard the words of Nabi alayhi salam. No, 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 through other means. 
the Jesus that he came with the bodies, everything was in front of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, in the company of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, in the environment that acquired the ilm and the knowledge. In the same way, Tabi'een also, not far away from, or some other means, no. Tabi'een physically went to Sahaba radiallahu anhu. They were in the company of Sahaba in that environment that deen was created. As it says, it is our burning desire for elders. What is this? That in every province, every city, we must have centers of ilm, in on which people must flock to those centers of ilm, and ilm has to be acquired in the company of the pious ulama which are there, stationed there. And this has to be done in the environment of deen. As it says, that this is the only tariqa, this is the only way to acquire the ilm of nabuwat. We can't, we can't, we can't run away from it. We can't do contrary to this. This won't be appropriate at all. He says the sunnah, every amal we do in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that amal must match like the amal of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Complete obedience and following the will of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam guarantees that an amal should be called an amal. An action is worthy calling an action in the eyes of Allah if that amal and action is in complete conformity with the summit of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As it says, imagine just man to relieve himself in the toilet, in the washroom. Just relieving himself, he can't do on his own. He can't do like he likes. No, what he thinks is better according to his country, his environment. No, he has to follow the path of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. How Nabi alayhi salam relieved himself, he must relieve to be called a true Muslim. Imagine one action of the necessity of the human body, that is to relieve yourself in the washroom. That also you have to follow the tariqah and the way of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Imagine such great ilm on which is the foundation of the entire religion. How can you just acquire how you feel to acquire it? You can't acquire how you feel to be a pilot. No, you have to follow. There's a system to be followed. We have to understand this. One is to impart knowledge. You can't just impart knowledge how you want to impart knowledge to people. You can't just keep on sending information and use other means. No, there is no that you just imparting knowledge. The objective is not imparting knowledge. The objective is that you impart the knowledge how it was the method of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sahaba Radiallahu Anhu. Objective is just not to acquire the knowledge of deen, ilm of knowledge. No, the objective is you must acquire the ilm of knowledge on the pattern and method of Sahaba Radiallahu Anhu and Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As this is all actions the same, whether it is ibadat, is salah, is zikr, is tilawat, is fasting, all the actions has to be in conformity with the tariq of Sahaba Radiallahu Anhu. Acquiring knowledge, and imparting knowledge given to others, that is also set methods, rules are there that has to be done like Sahaba did and Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam did. Ta'aleem and Tarbiyat. These two are one of the things that are the same. If they have been changed, then the Tarbiyat is the same as the Ta'aleem. If the Ta'aleem is the same as the Tarbiyat, تو تربیت غیروں کے طریقے پر ہوگی اسی لئے زمانے میں لوگ بے دین اور خلاف سنت زندگی گزارنے والوں کو محذب کہتے ہیں میں ایک چھوٹی سی مثال دیتا ہوں کہ اگر کسی تقریب میں کسی فنکشن میں آدمی ہاتھ میں ہٹی اٹھا کر دات سے گوشت نوشکر کھائے بجائے کانٹے اور چھوڑی سے کھانے کے تو لوگ یہ کہے گئے کہ یہ بچارہ کوئی گاؤں کا دیہات کا آدمی آگیا ہے جو تربیت یافتہ نہیں ہے یا شہری زندگی سے واقف نہیں ہے اور لوگ اس کو عائق کی نظر سے دیکھیں گے حالتِ عائق کی سنت ہے میں ایک مثال دے رہا ہوں اس پر ساری مثالیں قائم بھی جا سکتے ہیں کہ اگر وہ ہاتھ میں ہٹی اٹھا کر دات سے گوشت نوچ کر کھاتا ہے یا وہ اپنی انگلی سے پلیٹ کو صاف کرتا ہے اور ہر دفعہ پلیٹ سے کھانے لے کر انگلی داخل کرے اور انگلی کو صاف کرے پھر پلیٹ داخل ہاتھ کرے پھر پلیٹ سے انگلی کو صاف کرے دیکھنے والے کہیں گے کہ یہ طریقہ صحیح نہیں ہے اور یہ کوئی غیر محذب آدم آدم ہوتا ہے 
میں نے اس لیے پسند دی ہے کہ جب تربیت ان کے بغیر ہوگی تو یہودیت نصرانیت اور غیروں کے طریقے مسلمانوں میں ایس سے داخل ہو جائیں گے کہ یہ غیروں کے طریقوں کو تہذیب اور سنت کو بد تہذیبی اور تقیہ نوسی اور پرانی چیز سمجھیں گے اور کہیں گے یہ لوگ غیر غیر ترقی آفتہ ہیں جنہیں کھانے کی تمیز نہیں ہے حالانکہ خدا کی قسم اتباع سنت عین تمیز ہے میں نے یہ بات اس لئے عرض کی ہے کہ اگر علماء علم کو لے کر امت میں نہ پھیرے اور عوام کو سمیٹ کر جمع کر کے مدارس کے ماحول میں ان کو نہ رکھا گیا یا مدارس کے ماحول میں یہ ان کا اور ان کے اساتذہ کا تعلق صرف درس کے حد تک رہا انہوں نے ان کے سونے کی کھانے کی پینے کی کھیلنے کی ان کے چوبیس گھنڈے کی ضروریات کی نگرانی نہ کی تو پھر ندیہ یہ نکلے گا کہ تربیت ایک ختم ہو کر رہ جائے گی ایک الگ بار بن جائے گا اور صرف کتاب پڑھانا جو نبوت کے زمانے میں تھا ہی نہیں جو نبوت کے زمانے میں تھا ہی نہیں کتاب کھول کر بچے کو پڑھانا جو نبوت کے زمانے میں تھا ہی نہیں وہ صرف اثر بن کر رہ جائے گا اور تربیت جس میں نماز سے لے کر کھانا کھانے کے عمل تک کی نگرانی ہو رہی ہے کہ نمازی کو آپ نے دیکھ کر فرمایا نماز دوبارہ پڑھ کر ہی نماز نہیں ہوئی اس کی نماز کے رکھو کو سج دیکھو کو میں قائد جلسہ کو دیکھ رہے ہیں اور ایک آدمی جس نے بائیں ہاتھ سے کھانا کھایا اور آپ نے فرمایا کہ دائیں سے کھاؤ اس نے اس کا اہمیت نہ دیکھ کر کہہ دیا کہ میرا بائیں ہاتھ دائیں ہاتھ رکھتا نہیں ہے آپ نے اسی وقت بندوا بھی دی اور یہ فرمایا کہ اللہ کے درہ ہاتھ کبھی نہ اٹھے روایت نہیں کہ اس کے بعد اس کا ہاتھ دائیں ہاتھ ہمیشہ کے لیے بیکار ہو گیا شل ہو گیا کبھی اس کے پر بیدر نہیں اٹھ سکا کیونکہ صرف ایک کھانے کی سنت کی لائن کا انکار کر کے یہ کہا کہ دائیں ہاتھ نہیں اٹھتا ہے دائیں دائیں سے کھاتا ہوں اس ایک سنت کے انکار سے میں نے تو یہ دونوں آپ کے اس نیارس کی ایسی بھی مثال دینے کے لیے کہ حضور اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اس کی بھی نگرانی فرما رہے ہیں کہ یہ کھانا کس طرح کھاتا ہے اس کی نگرانی فرما رہے ہیں کہ نماز کیسے کھاتا ہے اسلام کے رکم کی بھی نگرانی ہو رہی ہے اور ایک آدمی کے رکمہ ہمیں لینے کی بھی نگرانی ہو رہی ہے تو میں نے اس پر ارس کیا کہ علماء اساتذہ وہ انبیاء کے وارث ہیں ان کی ذمہ داری ہے کہ یہ عوام کو ہر ممکن سمیٹے اپنے اداروں کی طرف اور علم کے معاہد میں اور یہ ان کا ان کا آپس کا ربط اور رشتہ صرف کتاب پڑھانے تک نہیں ہے بلکہ یہ ان کے مدرسے کی زندگی میں بچے کی فطرت کو اسلام پر اسلام پر قائم رکھنا فطرت اسلام پر تربیت ہونا یہ ان اداروں کا اصل مقصد اور علماء کی اصل ذمہ داری ہے جیسے میں نے ایک بات ارس کی ہے کہ صرف کتاب پڑھا دینا یا کتاب پڑھ لینا یا علماء کی صحبت اور ان کی وجہ اس کے بغیر علم کو کسی آلے سے حاصل کر لینا تعلیم اس کا نام نہیں ہے میں ایک دہاں تک بھی ارس کر سکتا ہوں کہ اس طرح غیر مسلم بھی علم حاصل کرتے ہیں اور ہیں اور بہت کچھ معلومات غیر مسلم اسلام کے بارے میں رکھتے ہیں ہمارے یہاں ایک بارہ بنگی وائی راکہ ہے جہاں ایک لڑکی جو بہت ذہین لڑکی ہے اور ہندو لڑکی ہے غیر مسلم ہے لیکن بہشتی زیور پورا ایسا یاد کیا ہوا ہے کہ بتا جاتی ہے کہ تمہارے مفتی صاحب نے فلان کتاب فلان صفحے پر یہ مسئلہ اس طرح بیان کیا ہوا ہے اور تم لوگ اس طرح بات کرتے ہیں معلومات اور نالج تو کوئی چیز نہیں ہے ہم بھی نہیں کہیں گے کہ یہ آلے بھائی میں نے عرض کیا کہ علم کہیں سے لے لینا یہ طریقہ روز کے زبانے میں نہیں تھا کتابی نہیں تھی کوئی قرآن بات میں جمع کیا گیا تھا اس طرح کے زمانے میں اطمار کے اسرار پر وہاں یہ تھا کہ ہم تمہیں تعلیم دیں گے عمل کے ساتھ ہماری ذمہ داری سے تمہیں کتاب یاد کرا دینا نہیں ہے بلکہ ہماری ذمہ داری یہ ہے کہ تمہارا عمل اس کتاب کے اندر 
तो मैंने आज क्या किया इस वक्त हम सब की जिम्मेदारी है सब की जिम्मेदारी यह है कि तालीम को तालीम को और तफीक को तालीम को तफीक को एक किया जाए और तालीम को तफीक पर लाया जाए तालीम को नशोशात पर नहीं तबीर किसी किताब को लिख कर पहुँचाने का नाम तबीर नहीं है बल्कि इल्म को लेकर जाहिलों के दरमियान और जाहिलों को लेकर लमा के दरमियान लाना ये नबूत का असर तरीका है ये नबूत का असर तरीका है कि आवाम और लमा के दरमियान और जाहिर और आलिम के दरमियान एक साथ रहने का ताल्लुक हो शाद ये उम्मत तक इन को पहुँचाने के लिए इसलिए काफ़ी नहीं है कि लोगों में अमल की तलब और लोगों के अंदर इबादत की तलब नहीं है अगर अमल की तलब नहीं है तो इन को कोई फायदा नहीं है अगर अमल की तलब है तो जितने अमल की तलब होगी इतना इन मुफीद होगा जितना अमल की तलब नहीं है इतना अमल इतना इन मुफीद नहीं होगा ये उसकी बात है तो मैंने आज किया कि हम जिस तरह सारी सुनतों का की तहरीर कर और इतवा करें उसमें एक सबसे अहम सबसे अहम बुनियादी सुनत यह है कि जिस तरह साहब कराम ने सहबत से इन लिया इस तरह हर उम्मती को हमारे गश्त मुलाकातें नफ हरकत है इस मकसद के लिए कि इन्हें मस्जिद की सजा से लेकर मदारस की सजा तक उम्मत को इन हल्कों से जोड़ा जाए और को चाहिए कि मदारस जो के बनने की जगह है ये यह यहाँ से तैयार होकर मदारस मसाली की सतह पर आए जो उम्मत तक इल के पहुँचाने का जरिया है उम्मत तक इल को पहुँचाने की जगह है उम्मत तक इल को पहुँचाने की जगह मस्जिदें हैं और के ये इनके बनने की जगह मदरसा है मदारस के बनने की जगह है और मसाजिद के जिंदगी भर इस्तेमाल होने की जगह है ताकि मस्जिद की से मुतल तमाम मुसलमानों की आबादी वो मस्जिद से की सहबत और इनकी निगरानी से अपने इल्म और अमल के अंदर मुताबकत पैदा करें Azad said that ta'lim and tarbiyat to impart knowledge and self-reformation, both things are very, very important. If a person he has been self-disciplined, but he got no ta'lim, this won't be appropriate. He has to need correct ilm. And secondly, is if the person got no, he got he is not self-disciplined, but He got ill in himself, knowledge in himself. That is also ignorance. That also won't do. Both things are important to each other. For example, as I say, what happens nowadays that people who are not Muslims or the people who are not practicing on the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and their life is again the sun of Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sometimes these people who are well disciplined, huh? In inward commerce, they are well disciplined, but they are not as civilized people. It is an example. He says, if in in any occasion where there is a uh, different people are invited, then what happens? In that occasion, if anybody takes a bone, matter, when he takes a bone and he is biting with his own hand, he takes in his mouth and he bites the meat, separates the meat from the bone. With his own hands and the teeth, then people say that this this person is not civilized. He got not disciplined. Him. Why don't he eat with uh, with knife? And why don't he eat use the fork? No. Why? How can he? He is not civilized man. He says, on the contrary, to eat like this, that you with your own hands, you take that with your hands and you separate the meat from the bone with your hands and with your teeth. This is the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Or, for example, a person is cleaning the plate with his own fingers, he's licking, 
Then what they say? No, no, no. This person is he is uncivilized. He says so much the tariqa and the manners of the enemies of the Yahud and Nasar, of the Jews and Christians have entered in our lives and eh? that we feel that we are backwards. And those people are practicing on, on the proper sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are known as people who are backward and they are uncivilized. He says, I swear that a person who is exactly following the sunnah of Nabi alayhi sallallahu alayhi at all given times, this person, this is civilization. This person is the most civilized and disciplined person in the whole world. There can be nobody better than that. Why this happened? Why? Because we just impart in knowledge and we are not making tarbiyat and not giving self-discipline in the students. He says, all of my kiram, they, they got the responsibility that they must take this ilm to ilm which they acquired with sohbat in the companion of the pious predecessors they must take this and go into the masses they go into the masses he says what happens that in a madrasa in the darul ulum <coughs> just to teach the kitab which you are teaching the book which you are teaching and you have to complete the syllabus if you just sit and teach open the kitab and teach it to the students this wasn't even in the time of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi we were just teaching the kitab to the students in the Darulun, for example, and we not supervising how they're making salah, how they're making wuzu, how they are eating, how they are sleeping. We're not supervising all the actions. Are, are, are the actions according to the Sunnah of Nabi Alayhi Salaam or not? We're not supervising that. It means we're only teaching the complete kitab, which is which is not even in the time of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As I explained that in the time of Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was in the masjid. And in masjid, he saw the students, his sahaba were his students, they were making salah. He saw one person didn't make salah properly. Nabi Ali Islam is supervising practical salah. He made salah in front of them, he said, you all must make salah in, like you are looking at me making salah. Make salah like you are looking at me making salah. Sallu kamara ayutumani, kamara ayutumuni usalli. And then when the person didn't make salah properly, after Nabi Alayhi he told that sahaba the student, Nabi Alayhi told the student, Um fasalli fa inna kalam to salli. He did it three times. Nabi Alayhi supervising his salah, that your ruku, your sajda, your salah is perfect or not, it should be like my salah. And he practically showed sahaba how to make salah. First he told them, and then he supervised it. In the same way, Nabi Alayhi used to eat with the right hand. Himself showed the Sahaba, see, I'm eating with right hand. I'm drinking with right hand. And then what happened? And then what happened? He saw one Sahabi, his student, eating with left hand. So he said, you can't eat with your left hand. What are you doing it? So this person said, I can't eat. I can't eat it with my right hand. I have to eat with the left hand. And then he said, because of pride in him. He didn't want to listen to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi alayhi you will never be able to, you will never be able to eat. So whole life, the person couldn't eat with the right hand. So he rejected it because of his pride. So the question here is, Nabi alayhi sallam was supervising all the sahaba, his students, from morning to the evening, how they get up, how they sleep, how they walk, what clothes they are wearing, and he was supervising from salah right till food, which is a necessity of our, which is necessity. He says, our responsibility is what? Our responsibility is if a child comes to our institution, he comes to our institution, to the Dharma, to the Madras, he comes here now to keep this child on the fitrat. He was born with fitrat, he was born with complete deen in his life, he was born a Muslim. We have to keep, keep that in that way. Practically, we have to become an example and impart knowledge with the companionship. We should be with the students and bring it. He says, what happens? A person sometimes is imparting knowledge to people who are very far away and uses other means. And what is imparting? So that is not knowledge. You're not imparting knowledge. You're imparting something else. And that person is also learning from far away. He's not in the saw, but practically Dean is not learning. Maybe he's with the here inside, in front of the Ustad, but he's practically not learning anything. The Ustad only teaching and going and coming. No practice. There's no practicality. Then what happens? He says this, non-Muslims also learn like this. They also want information regarding Quran and Hadith also. 
He says in, 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 the, in Hazrat's place, there's one locality known as Barabanki. In that locality, there's a Hindu girl, some people call Hazrat about it. He said, that girl, she has learned the whole Beshti Zewa. She got all the Masail Kitab, she knows it by heart. And she says that, you see, she, she tells our ladies there, Muslim ladies, she says, what you are doing here? Your Mufti Sahaja said, this is the Kitab, yours is not right, this is not right, this is not. She's correcting them. But will you tell that lady she is an alim? Can you tell a person like that as an alim? Can never tell it. Because it is not with the sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, we, our responsibility is what? Our responsibility is that we will, this is very important aspect. This is a summary of what has been explained. Please listen attentively. Very, very important. Listen attentively. We will impart knowledge with practicality. There has to be supervision. We have to become role models in practicing. Once we impart knowledge like this, then we are taking our objective. As I said, we have to join Dawat and Tabligh. You can't separate the both of things. A person says, okay, I write down the book and I send the book to somewhere. And now the other person far off is reading the book. You, you haven't done Tabligh as yet. This is not the Tabligh which is required. No, 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 no. You haven't done it. You a alim has to go to the masses. Just don't write the book and send it to him. You go to him and you practically show him how it is practiced. Then you impart the knowledge. Imparting knowledge doesn't mean you read and send it to him. You go yourself and go to the masses. And other responsibility is what? Bring those who are ignorant people in our environment of Darul of Darul Ulum and the Madrasa. Alim must go to the awam and bring that awam, that ignorant person, to our environment. He must come inside our environment. He'll see the environment of deen, where it has been practiced, the sohbat and the companion of the pious ulama. Now he's going to learn ilm. Without separation, one in the east, other in the west, you can't learn it in two different corners. He says, people haven't got talab. Few people got a desire. Generally, people got no talab. Now, a person, who got a talab in him also desire. He only got a desire of the part of it, of deen. He only got a desire to learn ibadat, but he got no desire to know deen about other aspects of deen, muamalat and mashra. He only got desire to learn ibadat. So he'll only learn that deen of which he got talab and desire in him. It means we are depriving him. We are depriving him of all other aspects of deen. So what is our responsibility? Very attentive. As I said, you have to create talab in him. You can't just again ask me, so I can't tell you now. You go, no, go and create talab. You can't say they don't want to learn. You can't say that. Don't say that they don't want to learn. No, you have to go and create talab. Create talab in them, desire in them to learn complete thing. As I say, that the most effective and the most important sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu salam in imparting and acquiring knowledge was so much. That you have to be in the companion. And as I say, the desire that the madaris, very important, listen attentively, very important now. As I said, the madaris are the place where ulama are made. Madaris, Darulun, is a place where ulama are made. Where the ulama is going to exercise, where is going to practice in the masjids. Masjid is a platform where the alim is going to show practically the people how to practice the entire thing. That masjid is a platform. Where you'll be made, you'll be made in Darul in the madrasa. But you need masjid. So what he says, please take your ilm, the knowledge which you got, don't restrict it to Darul Ulums. Bring it down on the level of the masjid. Bring it down on the level of the masjid. Make your masjid the platform to impart the entire deen to the general masses. General masses are linked to the masjid. They come for five times salah. Bring the, your knowledge, whatever you got in the Darul rooms, you are made, yeah, that has to be there. You have to keep on forming all the way in Darul room, but you have to take the ilm out of the Darul room and take it to the masjid level. Create that environment in the masjid that all that time there's an environment of teaching, there's an, an environment of imparting knowledge in the company of the ulama ikram in the masjid. آجی رضی اللہ عنہ نے عراب کہا ہے عراب والا نے کہا کہ ہمیں حمد اللہ اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے طریقے پر وضو سیکھ رہے ہیں تو روایت میں ہے کہ نہ کوئی بیان کیا نہ عراب والا نے کوئی قلم کا آواز سے مارا تو کہا کہ انہوں نے فرمایا 
کہ مجھے کوئی اونچی دیوار ایسی بتاؤ جہاں سے مجھے سب لوگ دیکھیں کوئی اونچی دیوار ہو کسی قلعے کی یا کسی کوئی بنائی اونچی کوئی جگہ ہو جہاں میں بیٹھ ہوں اور مجھے ایک لوٹے میں پانی دے لوٹے میں پانی دیا گیا سارے عراق کے عورتیں مرد بچے بڑے چھوٹے سب جمع ہو گئے آئی دیوار نے اس دیوار پر بیٹھ کر وضو کیا اور وضو کر کے وضو کے بعد سے کتنا کہا ہاں کہنا وہ رسول اللہ ہی سے تصور اللہ کے نبی کے وضو کا طریقہ یہ تھا حضری کے واپس آنے کے بعد جس سے پوچھا جاتا تھا کہ نبی کے طریقہ وضو کا طریقہ کیا ہے کہتا کہ لوٹے میں پانی کو بتا دوں کیا طریقہ ہے وضو یعنی میں نے آج کیا کہ جو امت کو دین کی تعلیم دینے کا اصل سنت طریقہ ہے کہ ان کو دعوت دے کر علم اور علماء کے معاہد میں لایا جائے ہمارے گشت ہماری ملاقاتوں کا مقصد یہ سب یہی تھا ہم نے تو اللہ مجھے معاف فرمائے کام کو نہ سمجھ کر تبلیغ کا اور ملاقاتوں کا مقصد صرف لوگوں تک بات کا پہنچانا بنا لیا ہے حالانکہ نقل و حرکت اس لیے تھی کہ لوگ جہالت غفلت اور منجرات کے معاون سے نکلیں اور نکل کر عوام مساجد کی سزا سے علم حاصل کریں علماء مزاری کی سزا سے علم لیں اور مسجد کی سزا پر آئیں اپنے علم کا مسجد کے علم کا مصرف اور ان کے استعمال ہونے کی جگہ مساجد ہیں اور ان کے علم کے لینے کی جگہ مزاری سے یہی اصل صحابہ اور صحابہ کے بعد تابعین کا طریقہ یہی رہا ہے کہ وہ علماء اپنی صحبت سے علم لیتے تھے اور ان کی مسجدوں میں علم کے حد قائم ہوتے تھے اللہ تعالیٰ آپ رضا کے جزائے خیر ادا فرمائے کہ ان علاقوں میں یہ مدارس کا قیام اور یہاں سے فارغ ہونے والے متخلیجین اور یہاں سے فارغ ہونے والے علماء یہ اس بات کا بھی عہد کریں اپنے اساتذہ سے کہ وہ یہاں سے فراغت کے بعد کسی معاش یا کسی تجارت یا کسی دنیاوی کام میں نہیں بلکہ جو امانت یہاں سے لی ہے اس امانت کو موت تک امت تک پہنچانے کے لیے اپنی اپنی مسجدوں کو اس کے لیے وہ اپنے اس کو اس کو اپنا ٹھکانہ بنائیں اور اپنی اپنی مسجدوں کو علم کے حلقوں سے آباد کریں یہ اصل یہ اصل امت کا سنت کا طریقہ ہے امت تک علم کے پہنچانے کا Didn't give no lecture. And now the people sitting there, they had any paper open. Hazrat Ali Rabi Allah said, I want to look for a, a high wall, maybe of a fort, maybe of a house, on the sit high, so everybody can see me. Because of any many, full of Muslims. So now all the Muslims gathered, and all the elders and children, everybody gathered, elderly people. They all to feel Hazrat Ali Rabi Allah. He was on a high place. He took the lota and he started making Muslims. And after making wuzu practically, he told those people, Ha kaza kana wuzu wa rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the method and this is how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make wuzu. Now, they all learnt it, they saw it practically, they saw it. Now, after Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu, anybody from far off used to come to the people of Iraq and ask them, how was the wuzu, how to make wuzu? I don't know a new Muslim or any person. I don't know how to make wuzu. So he used to say, no, I have no lectures. He used to say, bring the lota. And he said that, he used to make wuzu in front of him. And after making wuzu, he used to say, this was the wuzu of Ali radiallahu anhu. And as Ali radiallahu anhu told us, this was the wuzu of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, respected brothers, this is the real sunnah to learn and teach, to impart knowledge and to take knowledge, sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, that was the objective of gushed of sahaba radiallahu anhu, of the tabi'een uh, uh, at the time of that. That was the objective of Jawla. 
that was the objective of going and meeting people. This was the objective. That uh, to impart knowledge and deal practical in front of them. Today, unfortunately, what we have done, we just say, I will give information. We'll make reach the talk. We'll make reach now huh, the information and that is tabligh. Tabligh is merely not to give a talk and the person heard the talk. No. I mean, no, tabligh is you practically show them how deen has to be practiced. He says, our responsibility is what? Our responsibility is to take people out, go to the people, go into the masses, take them out of the environment of ignorance and the environment of the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everywhere where there is an environment of the disobedience of Allah and there is an environment of negligence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take people out of it and bring them into the environment of ills. Bring them in the environment of knowledge. Bring them in the environment of Iman. Bring them and practically show them how to practice it. He says, Ulama Ikram, very, very important. Where is the place where they are going to impart knowledge? The place is masjid. And from where they going to get knowledge? They only get knowledge from Darulum and Madaris. Go to the Madaris Darul Ulum. Take knowledge, pure pristine knowledge. Take it from there. And we are going to give it in the masjid practically amongst the Muslims. Those that you want no talab, go and create talab in them. Take them out of the environment of Jahala, bring them in this environment, and then in the sober companion, you give them the help of Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a lot great, great reward to the ulama ikram. May Allah accept the sacrifices of ulama of this country here who established this Darul Madaris after so much of Qurbani and sacrifice. May Allah ta'ala accept them. And may Allah ta'ala also accept them that many, many mashallah ulama are qualifying from this Darul Madaris and they must going, they are going to other nuclear areas and they are serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I request that all those who are qualifying and all those who come out of this Darul Madaris, they must make masjid the platform so that they can transmit and they can give knowledge and help truly, practically to the general masses. Allah Ta'ala Abhazad ki khidmat ko kubul farmaye wa didare ki hadra se khidmatut farmaye Allah Ta'ala apne ghair se mustabani farma kar zaruriyat ka apne khadam se takaful farmaye aur Allah Rabbi Nizad Abhazad ki zariye is mulk ko sara alam mein ilm aur hidayat ko aam farmaye Says, may Allah Ta'ala accept all the madrasa, all those people who are uh, directly, directly supporting the madrasa, Darul Ulum, you can accept it and make this country a means of hidayah for the entire humanity, the whole world, and the